I'm going to go ahead and work 5.1. I'll have a die. I'll go ahead and make a ten-sided die. Can be whatever side number of sides one wants. The first part of this will get you zero to nine, and the plus one will get you uh, one to ten plus a fraction, and the integer truncates it. Because it's ten-sided, I should go to ten squared as my number is to to get a good sample once you go to the number of sides squared at least uh, decoration for fun so I've got a, a, a die rolling numbers 1 to 10 goes all the way down to roll A101 now Given that I'm in Google Sheets, I can do a histogram simply by clicking on Insert Chart. And it will give me a histogram with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bins. That's because Google Sheets uses the square root of the sample size to pick the number of bins. So by squaring the number of sides of the die, I've actually got a 10 bin. Believe it or not, uh, that's a uniform distribution there. Might not look very uniform, but it is. Now, the other part of this uh, particular exercise, uh, we'll move that guy up to the top here. But the other part of this was to construct a frequency table. So I'll go do that. Be up here somewhere. A frequency table. I'll start setting it up here. First, the classes, the buckets or bins. Uh, they're going to be one, two, three, and one of the questions that came in was, how do I fill down? Uh, uh, and I did that earlier in this video, but let me be slower about how I fill down here. I'm using one, two, and see this bit of blue square at the corner? I grab that and I drag it, and that's how I fill down. And so that fills down. That's all there is to filling down. You just drag the corner as you see me do there. This is on a laptop works different on a uh, on a phone frequency function equals the frequency of I'm gonna go ahead and type this it's easier I know where it ends I know where it begins but I'll go ahead and I will drag I'm just clicking on the trackpad and dragging with my finger to put in the frequency function here the sum of the frequency should be the sample size since I intentionally designed a hundred, I should get a hundred out of this. By the way, it's fun to watch. This is supposedly an a uniform distribution, but you'll see that it it may not look as uniform as you might expect. These are randomly rolling dice, very random, and yet you'll see different shapes down here. Finally, the um, well, the let's do a couple more things. That's the sum. So that, that's the sample size, that's our sample size uh, in this case. And I'll, I'll go ahead and calculate just for fun the average equals the average of these rolls. Don't include that bottom zero. That's what I call spurious. That's generated by Google Sheets. Uh, it's unique to Google Sheets. The average is, uh, is uh, 10 for those numbers. There. Now let's do the relative frequency. The relative frequency is the probability. The relative frequency is the probability. And it will vary every time these die, uh, the, these, are, these die on the right side over here are rolling all the time. Divided by the sample size. Frequency divided by the sample size. And then I'm going to put in a dollar sign here. That's, a, that's kind of fast, but that, that will let me fill down. And again, I'll go to the corner, press on my trackpad, and slide my finger down the trackpad only down to 10. I'm ignoring this. This is just spurious. Ignore that thing down there. It does not matter. It is spurious. And the sum of these should be 1. And even though it keeps changing, you'll see it stays 1. And the average should be 1 tenth, 0.1. Because the probability of any one side is 0.1. That is the probability. The probability for any one side is equal to 1 divided by 10. 
that's point 0.1. So these two numbers will stay the same. Even as all of these numbers on the left side change, this number stays the same. This number is holding steady also. This is a uniform distribution. It might not look uniform, but it is uniform. And as I make other changes to the spreadsheet, you'll see if I change cell contents, for example, you'll see them. If I go over here and put, say, just a period in here, uh, the dies roll and I get a new uniform shape. No, it's not bimodal. No, it's not skewed. Believe it or not, this is a uniform distribution. This is uniform happening down here. And I can keep driving it by simply pressing like a period in. Mm, uniform, 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 uniform. I know it doesn't look uniform, but the differences here are simply random. Whether it rolled five fives or ten fives, these are random differences that are occurring here. Random differences. Now I'm on a laptop, so I can fix the histogram uh, to be a little bit uh, to get these buckets over to the size I really want them to be. Uh, I'm going to make the bucket size one, uh, and uh, that that'll help some there. And uh, grid lines, ticks, horizontal axis, yep, yep. The minimum should be 1. The maximum, probably 10, I suspect. Uh, let's see if that works. Nope, that's only 9 buckets. So I better go all the way to bucket 11. There we go. That gets me my 10 buckets. My 1s, my 2s, my 3s, my... Mm -hmm. uh, this bucket here, the last bucket on the end, will be the number of 10s. Five tens, nine nines. You can see that up here. Nine nines, nine nines. Over here, we've got a little bit of difference here. Six, six. No, no, okay, wait. Five is down there. That's six, six. So it's, no, no difference. It's, it's exactly my histogram, which was not created from here, but was created by selecting the data. By adjusting the buckets to match my classes, I now have a histogram that matches my frequency table exactly. Well, that's how to do homework 5.1. You pick the number of sides that's picked by this. Change that number, you get a different number of sides. But as I said, it is useful to run out to the square of the number of sides. At least 6-sided, yeah, 36, 7-sided, 49. And in the world of normal statistics, it's never a good idea to have less than 30. Uh, so even if you're using five sides, four sides, or two sides, you should probably still run it out uh, beyond just uh, the square of this number of sides. So in a nutshell, that's uh, 5.1. And a little bit of how to drag. You take, if I want to fill that formula down, I do that. Back here, I use the trick of selecting. I'm selecting in the middle, 1 and 2, and then it goes up by 2. That's a useful trick to know. If I needed to go up by odd numbers, I can put a 1 and a 3, and then I can simply drag that, and it'll go up by odd numbers. Notice again, I selected the first 2, which set automatically the increment. It sets the distance between these two, sets the increment, 1, 1 1.5, sets an increment of 0.5 and so it'll go up by 0.5 and again I'm using the blue square in the corner to fill down this is different than the way you would work on a cell phone on the Google Sheets app where you have may have to use the autofill capability select and then autofill uh, that's not how you do work on a laptop